All right, let's do this because right now I've got a piece of gear that is so unique in its form factor. Sounds so good, is so just outright, downright cool that the only downside might be that you have to wait for it. Now, Tom Petty said the waiting is the hardest part, and he might be right. But what Tom didn't tell you is that sometimes, just sometimes, waiting can be well worth it. Is it going to be well worth it in this case? Well, stick around and find out in the United States of Analog. Hi, I'm Bob, and you are in the United States of Analog. And today, like I said, we've got something special because Gishelli Lab sent this out to me. It is the Archel 3 Pro headphone amplifier in here. Uh, and it was nice of them to send this out for review. I want to thank them. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I've was i been a customer. I knew about Gishelli Labs before they knew about me. I've purchased two J2 DACs from them, and I love them. I'm predisposed to liking what's inside this box because, like me, Gishelli Labs is a great American success story. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! At least in my eyes, an American manufacturer who uh, has a kind of a smallish operation in Florida, and they make really killer, unique audiophile products. You've got uh, Sherry. Sherry, who is the kind of the uh, heart and soul of the operation. And then you got Gino, her husband, who I guess is maybe chief engineer. All I know is that he gives the term Florida man a good name. <laughs> and uh, there's all kinds of kids running around and relatives and uh, Gino's dad, uh, Joe builds the handcrafted cases, and we'll talk about those. So super excited to get my hands on the Archel 3 Pro headphone amplifier. And before we do anything else, we're going to have to unbox it. They told me it's going to be a surprise, okay? I have no idea what's in here. I have no idea how it's uh, outfitted. We're going to find out right now. And I'm getting excited now. Now, I've already done a lot of the kind of tape cutting and everything. I have not seen the amp yet. Uh, I just wanted to make it easy to unbox. So let's do this. Shelly Labs always packs their stuff super tight. I, I, I'm glad I've never had to repack one and return it because I don't think I could do it. Let's get to it. The unboxing, of course, this is probably the, it is the AC adapter or the AC power, I guess. Uh, it comes with a free cleaning cloth. I wanna thank Shelly Labs for that. I'll give my glasses here a little wipe down. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. How did you know I needed that today? Um, they always send some cool swag. It varies from box to box, but uh, you also get the uh, warranty card. And I think you go online for the instructions and you may need it because sometimes, um, you know, working through the various dials, these aren't conventional amps by any means. Um, but once you, uh, once you get into it and figure it out, you can set it and forget it and you're good to go. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Oh my goodness, here we go. Let's set this aside. I'm normally a neat person, but when it comes to unboxing, I, I just throw caution and packaging to the wind. Just straight over the shoulder. Oh, there it is. Check that out. Check that out. Oh my gosh, look at that. I had no idea what they were sending. I, I don't know what this wood is. I love the kind of multicolor effect. This is real wood, not veneer, ladies and gentlemen. And wow, look at that. Can you see that from the overhead view? I feel like I'm on QVC right now. <laughs> I, I can't tell you what this looks like in person. I don't, I don't have the, I should have the words because I'm a professional broadcaster and an amateur U, YouTuber, but I don't have the words. This is spectacular. You know, it doesn't have an overly glossy finish. I'm sure it's just uh, stained. Maybe it has a little bit of something, but listen, that's my fingernail going across the real wood grain that is so in relief here, so visible. And it just, every side of this, even the bottom, they wrap the bottom and it goes all around in these metal feet. This is a beautiful piece of kit, as they say, across the pond. Unbelievable. What a great start to the Archel 3 Pro review. High marks for the case. I may have to keep this one. 
Well, clearly, I was blown away by the Archel 3 Pro that Gishelli Labs sent me. By the way, it's Gishelli, I learned, not Gishelli, Gishelli, and this is the Archel, not the Arkel. Now, how do I know that? Well, because I picked up the phone and I called them. And that's one of the great things about Gishelli Labs is that when you pick up the phone and call, usually somebody, a human, picks up the phone. But clearly, I was super impressed by the woodwork especially. And I've always loved the Gishelli Labs form factor. I love my J2 DAX and this thing, they just knocked it out of the park. And Grandpa Joe, if I can be so bold as to call him that, did an amazing job. This purple heart stripe on top, you gotta see it in person. It's just killer. You know, most audio equipment these days Black boxes, silver boxes, black face plates, silver face plates. I feel like, at least in the 60s and 70s, equipment was a little more unique. I have a, I have a Marantz 2245 up there that I got in the 70s that, even though it has a silver face plate, you know, had beautiful blue lights uh, inside. And I've just always been a very visual person. I'm one of those audiophiles, and you probably are too, that listens to music not just with their ears, but their eyes. And if, and if you're one of those people, this is the kind of unit that you're going to appreciate. First of all, the clear plexi, which, which uh, I prefer because I like looking inside of things. <laughs> I used to do this when I was a kid. I used to take apart transistor radios and things like that just to see the parts inside. And I get a little shock every once in a while, but you know what? It was worth it. But I look in here and it's like, I don't know what all these things are, but it's like looking into a little, it's like seeing a little city in there, <laughs> like a little cityscape uh, making music just for me. And, and that's kind of just the beginning of the cool things that are going on here. Um, I just do appreciate that Gishelli Labs has decided to make equipment that, well, that you're going to want to hang on to for a long time and maybe pass on but is totally unique. This is something you can be proud of, something that uh, if you've got a cabinet, you're gonna wanna put this on top, not inside. You're gonna wanna keep it on display. Right now, let's, let's, let's take a closer look at the Archel 3 Pro with, with a few glamour shots shot by Dylan right there. Say hi, Dylan. Oh. <laughs> so the Archel 3 Pro comes in at 499 US dollars. Uh, it has 15 handcrafted wood options, wood case options for you to choose from. Many of those options come in at that $499 price point. Some will be a little more. Signal to noise, 124 dB, not too shabby. Two plus watts of power going out into 16 ohms. And it's got dual Sparkos Labs SS2590 Pro Op Amps, tone controls, eight LED colors inside to choose from. Well, most pro reviewers start at the front of the unit. I'm going to go down a different path and start <laughs> at the rear, because it's pretty simple. You've got balanced inputs left and right. You've got the, the uh, power input here, and you also have uh, two RCA, just the regular inputs, RCA inputs, and the pre-out. So you can use this as a preamp. On the front, lots of pretty red lights. You've got on and off, that's called power. Thank you, Bob. You've got tone, this enables or defeats the tone controls. You've got input, there's only two selections, balanced or unbalanced, so one is lit and the other is not lit. I can't remember the order, but uh, check your manual, RTFM. Uh, and you've got gain. You've got the headphone, the quarter inch jack right there, and you've got uh, treble and bass tone controls and a nice, volume control. The, the volume control, the tone controls, very nice knob feel. Um, they're knurled. Is that the right word? Knurled? I like saying that. Knurled. And uh, the tone controls each have a click right there at 12 o'clock. So that's convenient if you're operating in the dark. Don't be um, overwhelmed by the way Gishelli Labs on their DAX and their headphone amps um, lay out the switches. It's a little bit different. Not all the switches are twisty. Some are push button. Some, in the case of the J2 DAX, you have to push uh, multiple times to get to a certain input because they give you such a big selection of inputs and outputs. Don't fear it. Don't fear it. They're here for a reason. It all adds to the 
uniqueness and the beauty and just the tactile nature of their equipment. This is hands-on equipment. This is equipment you want on top of your cabinet. This is equipment that you want to get your hands on, that you want to display. And it's beautiful in its design. It's beautiful in its form and operation. And, you know, once you get everything dialed in, in this case, it's pretty simple. You only have two choices for input and you have two choices for gain. But once you've got it dialed in, set it and forget it. So I've been evaluating the Archel 3 Pro for about a week now, and I should show you uh, some of the competition I've been listening to as well, along with a description of some of the headphones I'm using and some of the music. Let's start with the music. Um, a lot of it's been real rhythm-based. I don't know, I've been into that lately. Uh, Idris Muhammad, it's a new, uh, new release of a early 70s kind of funk jazz, really cool, obviously very percussive. Also, Billy Cobham Spectrum, this, this recent reissue is super nice. Audiophile all the way. All right, and say what you will. Say what you will. More of the monkeys, a fan. What are you laughing at? More of the monkeys. Dylan over there is laughing. Um, More of the monkeys is a great, I mean, audiophile monkeys record from Rhino. A great reissue, cool notes. I, I can't speak highly enough about this record. And also, I've been giving this uh, Abbey Rhodes Half Speed Master record a shot, Willie and the Poor Boys by one of my favorite bands, Credence Clearwater. So real rock and roll, real percussive kind of stuff, even the jazz stuff uh, is real dynamic and I think a great fit for the Archel. As far as headphone amps go that I've compared the, uh, the Gishelli with, I've got the Valley which is one of my first little headphone amps from, from shit, also from that company. I have two Magnes. I have a Magni and I have a Magni 3 Heresy, which um, is similar to the uh, Gishelli Archel 3 Pro in that they both use op amps. So I was very interested on in how these would compare. I also have a Macintosh MHA 100, which is a dedicated headphone amp. Some would say it's a little overkill because it's a little pricey, but I gotta be honest with you, uh, not my favorite headphone amp in the house. Even before the Gishelli got here, um, I think it's just a little too warm. And that HXD technology that's built in that's supposed to make headphones sound a little more like speakers never quite worked for my ears. But you know what? I'm never gonna give it up. It's here to stay. And I love those blue meters. So uh, it's here, but not one of my favorite things. And then, you know, I've got stuff like this. Why? Why did I buy that <laughs> on Amazon? I don't know, because it had a tube in it. Uh, you tell me why I bought it. Um, it's a little noisy. It's the Bravo. But um, here, Dylan, I'm giving that to you. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about the headphones I've been using. The Sennheiser HD 650 open back the Emotiva GR1 open back, and thanks to the fine folks at Origin Hi-Fi here in Austin, uh, I got to borrow a set of uh, Focal Clear MG headphones that retail somewhere between 1200 and 1500, I think, I can't remember, but uh, that was a real treat for me because I'm pretty much a sub $500 headphone guy, okay? I always will be, but it was nice to have a real set of big boy cans to put on my cans, that's, that's what we call headphones in the industry. Um, so that, uh, that's, those are the headphones that I uh, used with the Archel 3 Pro. Now let's talk a little bit about op amps because there are op amps in here, specifically Sparkos op amps. What did I say, the 2590, SS2590 Pro op amps, okay? That sounds real classy and fancy and it is, I, these things retail for like $59 a piece, and there's two of them in here, and I know because I looked. I, you, you can see them, they're right here. They're right here in front of the, uh, the RCA inputs. I recognized them from the picture. So uh, yeah, so you, a lot of quality going in there. So you know, when you're talking about $120 worth of op amps inside of here, and then you talk about the $499 price point, it starts to make a little bit of sense, and you're starting to see where the quality is. So I read a little bit about op amps at lunch today. I read two articles and I don't claim to be an engineer. And I understand that some of the sonic benefits of op amps could be things like transparency, clarity, 
linearity. That's all well and good. Uh, as, as you know, if you've watched any of my reviews, you know I'm more about the emotion, about the connection to the equipment and the connection to the music. I don't live in an anechoic chamber. The air conditioning is blasting in my house because it's 110 degrees outside. So, you know, that's several dB of noise that are just, just from the air conditioning. So I'm always looking for equipment that I can connect to emotionally. Specs are great. I respect them. I read them. They're in the brochure, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, um, I think the, the op amps uh, are, are a great advantage here. And uh, if Gino decided that, that uh, Sparkos are the ones to go with, uh, I'm good with that, okay? I'm 100% good with that. He's done a lot more research on this than I have. Uh, and uh, I can tell you um, they're used to great, to great advantage here with this headphone amplifier. Another debate we can have is about uh, unbalance versus balance. Some people like balance, some like unbalanced RCAs. I, in this case, for some reason, and I can't explain it, preferred the RCA. I tried both. Um, I found the XLR to be just maybe a little spicy, but that just could have been because the, the gain goes a little higher with the XLR, and maybe that's how I interpreted it. But I think you're fine either way. Uh, if you can only do RCA, you're in great shape. And for a lot of my listening, uh, I did use the XLR through the J2 um, AKM DAC that I have. I have two of them, actually, but I only connected one to this. Uh, but you're fine. You're fine with just RCAs, I promise. The tone controls are my favorite thing on this amp. And the fact that they're on board, hands-on, I think is so cool. It's so cool because I was listening to that Billy Cobham record, and I was thinking to myself, where are the... Where's the ride symbol? I'm not really hearing the, the, the ride symbols. Now that's, you know, part of that's on me. We all have different ears. We all have different hearing. We all have different listening spaces. But I was wondering where the ride symbols were. And I just took that treble control and I just put it at one o'clock. Just, just one o'clock. That's all I had to do. And the, and, the, and the symbols magically like appeared out of nowhere. It was fantastic. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about these tone controls. I mean, this is the reason for me why this, this is a keeper. This is a keeper amp. The sound signature of this amp is full, dynamic. You've got the sound stage, you've got the instrument places, you've got all the things that you would expect at this price point. Yes, yeah, the tone controls for me that, that separate and put this little baby, this American beauty above all of all of these amps, and I'm being I'm being completely honest. I mean, this is going to be my go-to, just because. Well, not just because, but mainly because of these tone controls. You've got many amps in one, thanks to the tone control. You want it to sound a little more like this, dial in some treble. You want it to sound a little more like the Macintosh, add some bass, add some warmth. Um, it's that easy. And uh, again, the sound is full, dynamic, and you basically can dial in any tone that you want. And you know what? You've got a unique conversation piece that uh, people are going to talk about when they come to your home. And the other thing I love about this, because I'm all about pride of ownership, no one else has one of these. You understand? Like, you can go get a black box piece of gear somewhere, and a million other people have exactly the same box. I'm the only one that has this one. All right, we've been talking for a while now. I gotta wrap it up. As my wife would say, I've gotta get to the net net. I've gotta net it out for you. Every once in a while, you find a piece of equipment that is so right for your lifestyle, so right for your system, has a sound that is so appealing to you that you just have to jump on it. And you need to jump on the Archel 3 Pro. Get your 499 together because um, this is something special and something that you'll want to own. There's something about that pride of ownership that, that comes with uh, being an audiophile that, that, that's so important. I will say that the sound signature has a personality. It's not completely linear. I don't want it to be completely linear. That's why we have so many different components because we want things to sound different. If everything was just flat line frequency response, how boring our hobby would be. The sound is full, it's rich, it's not fatiguing, 
It's not going to drive you crazy. You've got the tone controls. This is the one to own. This is the one to have. I'm keeping this one somehow. Get one. The Archel 3 Pro from the beautiful people at Gishelli Labs. We'll see you next time on the United States of Analog. Let's clear out some of these amps. Let's, uh, we gave this one. I thought I gave you this one. He already gave it back to me.